Hi, I'm Alicia Butler-Pierre, and in this season of the Business Infrastructure Podcast, we are touring 12 countries to figure out what's it like to do business in each of those countries. Next up on our tour is Canada. But before we get there, first make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss any of the other episodes that are coming out this season. Now let's get to figuring out what is it like to do business in Canada? Hey, how are you doing? Still with us? We've had quite the adventure so far, haven't we? Our 12 country tours started in Nigeria, then we went to Ireland, then England, and now we're headed across the pond to Canada. I'm Alicia Butler-Pierre, and this is Season 18 of the Business Infrastructure Podcast, the show where we share operational tips, tactics, and tools for curing back office blues. As we settle into our seats on Equilibria Airlines, we have quite a bit to process from the meetings we've had so far, so it's a good thing we have a longer flight. We need to be well-rested when we meet our next guests. These business partners are a ball of energy. This episode is underwritten by Equilibria Incorporated, the company behind this podcast where we design scale-ready business infrastructure for fast-growing small businesses. Wake up, sleepyhead. We're starting to make our initial descent into Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. The sky is clear and the waters of Lake Ontario are strikingly blue. Isn't the skyline beautiful? Oh, look, there's the famous CN Tower. No doubt Toronto is one of my favorite cities. And luckily, we're here before it starts to get really cold. As the airplane taxis to a gate at the Toronto Pearson International Airport, we send a text message to Kathleen Bova and Peter Wright to let them know we've arrived. Next, we make our way to the rental car we've reserved. We have a nearly two hour drive as we head to Kitchener, but I promise you the commute will be worth it. This is episode 225, Doing Business in Canada with Kathleen Bova and Peter Wright. I'm Kathleen Bova, and I'm located in Waterloo, Ontario, which is about an hour west of Toronto. And um, I've been here since the 80s. (laughs) I'm Peter Wright. I'll keep my story short. I was born in England, lived most of my life in Africa, moved to Canada in 2003, 2004. And I live in a town called Woodstock, a little city of 40 odd thousand people, which is uh, further northwest from Kathleen. It's about halfway between Toronto and Detroit on the Michigan border. That's me. As I mentioned earlier, Canada is near and dear to me. Several years ago, I did some work in Kitchener, Ontario. So it's a treat to meet Kathleen and Peter here at a restaurant called Williams Fresh Cafe, the very place where they first met but we'll get into that a little later. Kitchener is a twin city to Waterloo where Kathleen lives. Although she's been in the province of Ontario for many years, she's originally from Quebec. Yes, I am French Canadian. I speak French to my father and English to my mother. (laughs) Quebec is the Eastern neighbor of Ontario. So how did Kathleen end up there? Well, I actually came to Waterloo to go to university, so I just never left. I managed to get a job straight out of university. I had friends here and all of a sudden it just became home, really. And then my parents decided they were lonely and moved here as well. And what about Peter? He mentioned living in Africa most of his life. So how did he end up in Ontario? Turns out he has quite the story. The way I got there was that my father... Uh, was quite old when I was born, comparatively. He was well into his 30s because um, I was born in 1950, so that was not long after the Second World War. And he spent time in the military before the war, so he was quite late getting married. Came out of the army, didn't know what to do, spent some time in the police, joined the British um, civil service, 
and joined the Foreign Office and got posted to the country of Rhodesia, as it was called, on a three-year tour. And he got an extension and another extension. But after nine years, they said, you know, you, this is unprecedented. You've got to go back to England. He said, no, I like, I like Africa too much. So he resigned and started farming. So that's how I ended up in Africa. And Peter stayed in Africa for many years until he had no choice but to leave. There was a terrorist war in Rhodesia and things were not looking good. And I had two young boys to worry about. They were about ready to start school. So I moved to South Africa and I lived there for 14 years. And then uh, I worked in the corporate world, started my own business, had two businesses and things went very badly. Civil war broke out in my two biggest uh, markets at the same time. Then I had some go on ships going north and the, some got lost, some got stolen. I didn't get paid. So I went down for a lot of money and uh, lost everything. My house, my marriage had fallen to pieces. Because of the political change in, in South Africa, where I was living, middle-aged white guys were virtually unemployable. So my brother was still in Zimbabwe, and he said, it's fairly stable. Why don't you come back? So I did. I started another business and uh, lived there for quite a while, met my current wife, took over her late parents' farm, went farming, and then politics reared its ugly head and the wheels fell off that and lost everything all over again. And that's when I came to Canada. So that's in a nutshell. Wow, that's a whole lot packed into that nutshell. 15 years worth to be exact. While Kathleen didn't go far to land in Ontario, Peter did. I was curious, what led him to choose Canada? Turns out it had to do with one of his sons and his daughter-in-law who grew up in Canada. My son saw opportunity here than England, so they immigrated here in 98. So when we had all the trouble, we would have liked to have gone to Australia for the climate or come to your country, to the southern states for the climate more than anything. But as you know, coming to your country, if you haven't got contacts and you haven't got money and you can't pay lawyers and get a green card, it's not a good start. So that was out. Australia wanted a huge bond because we were middle-aged, uh, which we couldn't pay. So Canada was a good option. That's why we came here. Mm, very interesting. Okay. So we have an expat and a native Canadian. <laughs> So Kathleen, back to you. I see here that you started off with a business called New Age Health. Is that correct? Or or did you just start off owning your own business? No, I did work for an insurance company for about 15 years. And I, I realized, to be honest with you, the corporate world was killing me. Uh, it was just sucking the life out of me, if you will. And I knew I wanted to get out of it. And I had an entrepreneurial spirit. I just didn't know what it was I wanted to do. And um, after some exploration, I embarked on energy healing and quantum healing. And I embarked on this business called um, Biofeedback. Kathleen operated that business for about nine years. And though she liked it, she couldn't help thinking, feeling that something was missing. I still wanted to be my own boss. That's what I really, truly wanted. I wanted to have the autonomy. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I started exploring further. And um, that led me to doing online magazines, which is how I met Peter uh, through networking events. And uh, Peter and I struck up a friendship. And that friendship started by their chance encounter here in Kitchener at a networking event held at Williams Fresh Cafe. Eventually, Kathleen and Peter would go into business together. In the meantime, Kathleen partnered with a former co-worker from her insurance days to found Carry Tech Solutions. We do tech recruitment for companies here in North America that are looking to hire someone in tech, either a developer or software engineers, Anything in tech, we help source uh, an employee for them based out of Serbia. We also have a dedicated tech team based out of Serbia. So if a company comes to us and says, you know, we don't have the capacity in-house to develop, say, a mobile app or a web application, can you guys help us? And of course, we can. This is fascinating. So you go from insurance to 
uh, yeah. their own business with biofeedback onto yeah. media and yes. now also taking on tech. Wow. Wow. It just, just shows how multifaceted you are. It's very impressive, Kathleen. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship. You don't have to be boxed into one particular career. You have that freedom and that flexibility to to explore other things. I believe that's how we're all wired as human beings. We have multiple interests. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. You can catch the full interview by going to businessinfrastructure.tv or by clicking the link below in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe so that you'll know exactly when the next episode drops. See you in the next video. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.